Another episode of the commute. Where I'll be your driver and I'll be your passenger. Uh, so we have a farmer here. Went to the hospital complaining of a stomach ache, and they go and they check him out, and they find hundreds of coins and nails in his stomach, uh, and other objects. And he's uh, from India. So he's one of those people that just eats weird shit, whatever that's called. Yeah, he said that uh, he used to gulp down coins and metals with fruit juice or milk due to family problems he had and he slipped into a depression and like that was a thing he did he got like addicted to it he got addicted to eating coins mm-hmm. oh the coppers got somebody up there oh did they see they, yeah. were, they, had, they had purpose yeah I had a purpose for cutting me off <laughs> go coppers yeah got him does he have a black lens oh plate? please please, please. Say yes no, no. You suck. Why would they pull over someone? So you don't get pulled over if you have black plate. <laughs> Worst cop ever. <laughs> uh, so anyway, they said they they removed 140 coins, 150 nails, and a handful of nuts, bolts, and batteries. Oh, batteries, dude. Ugh. Ooh, there's like a wig on the side of the road. Oh, yeah. <laughs> someone lost a weave. Uh, so, what? Yeah, they said... Uh, he also had needles in him, which they said would have uh, eventually punctured something and killed him. Well, I would have thought something would have happened with the batteries, but... Yeah, like that jet, like your stomach acid would corrode them, and then you're done. Yeah, and then it goes into your intestines, and then burns the crap out of your intestines. Unless they were, like, watch batteries, like... Uh, yeah, I guess, yeah, whatever his weird obsession was. <laughs> but, uh, so they said they went in on a Wednesday... And there was still stuff left behind, so they let him heal a little bit. And on Saturday, they went back in and got the rest. He said he's never going to do it again, though, because he feels so much better. Well, yeah, it doesn't sound like a pocket full of change every time you take a step. <laughs> you ever swallow anything uh, weird? Uh, like that? No. no I swallowed a penny when I was a kid. I was playing around. I was laying on the ground. I was just playing with coins around my mouth. Penny went right down my fucking throat. <laughs> I thought I was gonna die, so my mom called the doctor. And uh, he said, as long as he passes it, he's fine. Uh-huh. So like every time I took a shit after that, my mom had to get a popsicle stick and go in and like break up my shit. <laughs> like look for a penny. Oh, man. And then about a couple months later, <laughs> I did it again, but with a button. <laughs> I saw a button, a plastic button. Uh-huh. But my mom was so cool about it. She'd be sitting there breaking apart my poop. I still remember this day she had a song she'd sing when she did it. She'd be like, button, button, who's got the button? <laughs> she tearing away my shit. <laughs> I'd kill my kid. Once accidents happen. Twice, yeah. what the fuck were you thinking? Stop putting shit in your mouth. Because <laughs> then I gotta go through your shit. <laughs> they both came out both times. Yeah. I processed plastic and copper very That's well. Good. That's yeah. good. Yeah, it's good to know that you have that ability. Yeah, he's like, never do it again. <laughs> I don't know what I'll do though. Mom's dead. Who's gonna go through my who's food? Gonna, who's gonna sort you? I'm that's not. Why, that's, that's just disgusting. That's why you have kids. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you want allowance this week? Take this popsicle. The change is in the bowl. <laughs> <laughs> it's this coin bowl. Is it socket your way in it for you? <laughs> uh uh-uh, uh, Daddy's swallowing the big one. I got a daughter here. <laughs> <laughs> I guess the tooth fairy's coming the end of the week. <laughs> oh. <laughs> working for this one. Uh, so then we got uh, Mila Kunis stole a chicken. What? She's a chicken thief. Uh, allegedly. Can't she buy chicken? You would think. Well, there's a uh, longtime friend of hers uh, from the Ukraine, I guess, where she grew up. Who had a chicken farm? She had oh, a favorite that's chicken. Right. I forgot she was like from. Not here. Yeah, like Eastern Europe. So back when they were first graders, 25 years ago, uh, her friend Caro said that uh, her her pet chicken Doggy went missing. Her name was Doggy, and uh, 
Neil Kunis admitted to it. She was like, yeah, so if you have a chicken farm, you have any chickens you want. I wanted that chicken. So her friend said, uh, you know, she was upset, broken up about it, whatever, time went on. So now she comes over to L.A. to become a singer, sees me, Lacunas, and all these bad memories start flooding back <laughs> of her missing chicken. Uh -huh. So she's suing her for $5,000 for emotional distress. $5,000? Of course, that's all you can do in small claims court. Yeah. <laughs> Anything more than that, you need an actual lawyer. And an actual lawyer's not going to take that case. Uh, she said, of course, she never stole the chicken. Um, they said this girl keeps... Anytime she's interviewed, her stories change about how old she is and all this other stuff. Oh, okay. One of those. So, but does, I guess Mia Kunis knows her, though. Yeah, yeah. They never, to have, like, met up with yeah, her. Yeah, they like, never said that they weren't friends. Yeah. I guess this girl needs money and... Didn't want to ask her for five thousand mm -hmm. dollars, or she did, and Mila was like, "No, mm -hmm. all right, all right. Remember, that, remember that chicken? Remember that chicken? You gonna pay? You gonna pay for that chicken? For that chicken?" Uh, and then her and Ashton Kutcher put uh, a video up, of course. Of what? Um, them talking, but you know, he's always got to like do like videos or whatever. Uh, no, I didn't know he did. Yeah, that. he's kind of weird that way. He loves making videos. I know he made weird camera commercials. They called it the Chick Millay scandal. Millay. And what else did they say? They, they got funny with something else. She said she's a chicken advocate. Really? Who's a chicken advocate? You are now. Well, I like chickens, but I'm not like going out there and like, <laughs> you know. Oh, uh, give it time. Those, your chickens are new. Yeah. Give it time. I want to become an advocate for Wait till they get threatened with like bird flu or something. Oh, yeah. You're going to be like that. You're going to be out there. I would not like that. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. I don't know. They, they, they had some other good chicken joke, but it wasn't good anyway. Oh, okay. Yeah, so okay. That's not right. yeah we've, it's, we spent too much time on them already. <laughs> Enough of them. Enough of those jerks. Uh, keeping a secret physically weighs you down. So says science. So <laughs> they said that uh, keeping a secret is a bigger burden than you may imagine. It literally weighs you down, limits your abilities to get things done. Uh, they said they, they did a study where they had 452 men and they split them up and they had some men think about personal secret they had that really affected them in some way, whether it was sexual orientation, you know, something mm -hmm. bad you did that hurt somebody in the past, something like that. And then other men think of secrets they had that just were just like secrets they never told for whatever reason, nothing too major. Mm -hmm. And they showed them a picture of a hill, all the same picture. And those who were thinking of their really bad, deep, dark secrets all saw the hill as being steeper than it actually was. And they said because it reflects, uh, you know, life being a harder hill to climb. Like you see hills as something really bad when you're emotionally wrecked. Okay. Kind of like if you're riding a bike for two whole days and there's a little tiny hill that would look like this huge ass hill to you. Uh huh. So you'd be like, oh, I'm just so fucking saying it has that kind of effect on you. Huh. Um, they say it can affect your job. Uh, you know, if you're just preoccupied with stuff, you can't think right. Yeah, especially if your job is like the estimation of inclines. <laughs> yeah. That just fucks your whole thing. You just up. get fired at that yeah, point. You can't can't do it anymore. So I build a hill and it's just like this flat plane. <laughs> you work for the railroads. You can't judge <laughs> grades anymore. It's... Uh, they said, What's the fix? Reveal your secrets. They said Reveal talk to somebody secrets. about your secrets and uh, it allows your body and brain to process them and they're not a problem anymore because it's no longer a secret. You're like, fuck it. People know. Hmm. That's why I drink. Yeah, that, and then your secrets just come out while you're drinking. <laughs> and it, it, it gets no, everything it's, it's out it shuts the demons up, you know? Yeah. They all want to, like... They all taunt me with my secrets, my deep, dark secrets, <laughs> and uh, I shut them up. Yeah. Go to sleep. Have Shh. a drink. Hush. Life is never better than when the demons are silent. 
advice, life advice from the commute. Yeah. Drink, Drink your problems away. And never judge gradients with secrets. <laughs> yes, please don't. I like my hills the way they are. <laughs> don't judge inclines and... <laughs> yeah, don't judge. Just don't judge. You're the one with the secrets. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> not that's us. the lesson that needs to be learned. <laughs> you got secrets, motherfucker. Don't judge anything. I'll judge you. Alright, well, until we judge again, that'll do it for this episode of The Commute. Make sure you like and subscribe on YouTube and Facebook. Uh, check us out on Twitter, at Driver Passenger. Shoot us an email at the Commute Podcast at Comcast.net. Hope to see you soon.